Good morning. Another sunny day. I don't know how we rate, but man, God is surely smiling on us on these sunny days. It's it's impossible to believe otherwise. I remember when my son was in high school. As some of you know, he is he's on the spectrum, as they say. It took me, goodness, till he was 17 years old to force Fort Wayne Community Schools to finally <clears throat> actually test him to get a real diagnosis. They were very reluctant, as they are, to spend any money on students. So here he is, he's in high school, and he is, uh, you know, by consensus of the alleged educational experts, He's in mostly regular high school classes. <clears throat> the problem is he's on the spectrum and he has little tics and he talks to himself under his breath. So, did he have friends in high school? No. This integrating of kids on the spectrum into regular classes this does not help the autistic child. This is a social experiment, really. It makes other people more aware, perhaps, perhaps a little bit more compassionate, realizing that there are people with developmental disabilities in our midst. But it really, in my opinion, is hurtful to the actual student with disabilities because they don't find any friends. They don't connect with anyone their own age. Like, they just don't. And it was heartbreaking for me at the time. It turned out that, you know, he loves connecting with adults, always has. And so he would feel very comfortable doing recycling projects and whatnot after school because he connected with the teachers more than with the students. When that became apparent to me that he needed some kind of social community in which to function, thank God for Easter Seals Ark. There is a man who worked there, he might still be there, named Doug, who is straight up a heroic, kind person. He would pick up Stefan for bowling and basketball and they would organize uh, charter fishing expeditions on Lake Michigan. <clears throat> he got him involved in Special Olympics. In other words, this guy went above and beyond in so many ways to help Stefan connect with other people socially, his peers. For the rest of us who are allegedly developmentally normal, we too sometimes get into kind of an isolation mode, if you will. <clears throat> we cut ourselves off from, from, even from the people we care about the most. We don't share what's really going on with us. And if we have an addictive behavior problem, it's just that much easier to go drink or get high if I'm locked away in my room, not interacting with anybody in my house. Being part of a community of support is really what every human needs. I've always known this but I think it's become even more poignantly obvious during the last year. We're coming up on a year of my working telehealth. I never expected, A, <laughs> to be meeting with clients uh, you know, over, you know, on Zoom or Google Meet. 
but that's what we that's what it came to and and it works it's another way of creating community there are people who have been you know absolutely outstanding and amazing <clears throat> and have found recovery and I've been privileged to share part of, of their journey and they know me and I know them, but we have never met in the physical world. I'm just a talking head on a screen, challenging them, supporting them. Sometimes, you know, being a bit of a douche just to get their attention. That's one of the lessons of the pandemic. We learned on you know on the plus side new ways to form community and on the negative side, man, simple things that we used to take for granted became impossible, like hugging people <coughs> at church, <coughs> going to restaurants uh, with groups of people and hanging out. Those things, I hope. I hope one year later, 500,000 deaths later, I hope we're headed back to some kind of normalcy because we all need that community. The danger of community <clears throat> is that sometimes we fall into the wrong kind of community for us. You know, if you think isolation is a problem, Sometimes <laughs> choosing the wrong community can also be uh, not in our highest good. So, for example, if I have a drinking problem, hanging out in bars with other drinkers probably is not the kind of community that I should be engaging in. If I am using Perk 30s or heroin or fentanyl, I probably should not be hanging out at the plug's house, making friends with the other people who are always there Monday through Monday through Monday, every damn day of the week, losing their lives little by little. Sometimes we end up in communities where it's just not the place we belong. We end up with people who are actually feeding our weaknesses rather than our strengths. I remember my first job after the paper route. <clears throat> and that was, I was 17 years old and I was working as a bartender with a fake ID and a waiter and an after hours companion just leave that lie there. The people that I worked with were not bad people. I learned some mad cooking skills. I got straight up trained to be a sous chef in that environment. And that is a skill that I have appreciated ever since. I can make you a damn five star meal in 20 minutes. So I learned a lot of good things. However, however, that early community of people always involved a lot of liquor, a lot of wine, a lot of drugs, a lot of open sexuality. And it was a different life, certainly, that I... <laughs> I never anticipated being a part of. And originally, I tried to keep myself kind of uh, aloof from, from some of that. But gradually, over time, I found myself living the way all of my working companions were living. I still had my faith community. I still went to church every Sunday. But I also had this other community, my private life community. And so six days a week, I was one person. And one day a week, I was another kind of person. Acting differently, speaking differently, hanging out with different people. 
to the point that I really lost touch with who I really was beneath and behind and, and underneath the roles and the jobs and the perceptions of other people. It took a minute to figure that out. <clears throat> we all need to pay attention to the community that we're choosing to be a part of. Isolation, not good. We already know that. Those of us with addictive behavior issues, man, that's the, that's the least safe place on the planet sometimes is you, you leave me home alone with nothing on my to-do list and I'm going to get myself in trouble. It's true for a lot of us. So we have to find a community to be a part of, but that has to be the kind of community that truly supports our highest best selves because living in contradiction and and you know profound inconsistency with with who we really are who we're trying to become what we're, what we're called to be straight up leads to some spiritual dis-ease some spiritual schizophrenia or as the as the DSM-5 terms it, BSC syndrome, <laughs> batshit crazy. So today, <clears throat> we're on the verge of a weekend. <clears throat> Let's look at where we are. What part of, of a community are we? Are we part of a supportive community? Are we receiving support and are we giving support to that community? Or are we holding ourselves aloof? And if we're part of a community that really is not honoring our better self, maybe today we should just take a breath and take a step back from that and think about who we really are, who we're meant to be. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, Whoever walks with wise people becomes wise. But the ones who be kicking it with trifling fools be straight up ratchet. Or words to that effect. Let's pray. Mighty gracious God giver of community and connection. Help us today to step outside our tendency to isolate ourselves and to consciously choose connection with others. Help us to be mindful of who we really are, who you see us becoming. And if we are holding back on surrendering to your will today, give us courage to set aside our doubts and our fear and take one step closer to walking in your light, surrounded by the community you choose for us. Amen. Have a great Friday.